Hello and welcome. In this video, we will look at Core Mining's third quarter results. In the third quarter, Core produced about 4.3 million ounces of silver and about 65,000 ounces of gold, which is an average quarter for silver production and a slightly above average quarter for gold production. For the third quarter, revenue was about $171 million. Profit for the quarter was about $3.5 million. However, total costs and expenses were higher than revenue, and profit came from a fair value adjustment and a tax benefit. Coors average selling price for silver was $19.46 for the quarter, and average selling price of gold was $1,260. With a selling price of $19.46 for silver and $12.60 for gold, Coors was unable to mine for a profit. The current price of sub $16 for silver and sub $1,200 for gold suggests that Coors is really struggling for profitability. For the rest of the year, Coors projected production of between 17 and 18 million ounces of silver and 229 to 244,000 ounces of gold has not changed. Exploration was conducted beneath current production in zones 10 and 20 in Kensington South, with drilling results encountering high-grade gold in grades greater than one ounce of gold per ton of ore. Furthermore, quote, drilling activity in Hulalin veins 4 and 5 encountered several multi-gold ounce intercepts. Underground development is planned for 2015, unquote. Looking at resources and reserves, Kerr presently has about 380 million ounces of silver in reserves and another 300 million ounces of silver in resources. At current production levels, with no new expansions or discoveries, Kerr has over 35 years worth of silver resources and reserves. Core includes a chart showing reconciliation to gap that highlights what I consider to be a somewhat misleading practice by silver producers and the way they treat byproduct metals in their bookkeepings. When we look at Core's reconciliation chart, we can see that Core is using silver equivalent ounces to show costs. Most producers pretend to consider byproduct metals as sort of an extra or freebie income. Therefore, they subtract all the income from the byproduct metals from their production costs. This gives what I consider to be a misleading low calculation of production costs, also called cash costs, while at the same time gives what I consider to be a misleading high calculation of profits for the primary metals. Remember that Coors average selling price for silver in the third quarter was $19.46 an ounce. Looking at Coors reconciliation chart, we can see that the total cost of sales and total amortization is $14.71 an ounce. This suggests that the margins after cost of sales and amortization are almost $5 an ounce. But when we look at the consolidated income statement, we can see that total cost of sales and amortization actually uses up almost the total revenue for the quarter. Furthermore, the reconciliation chart shows that all in sustaining costs are $18.86 an ounce, again suggesting that by selling silver at $19.46, there should be a pre-tax profit of $0.60 an ounce when in fact the consolidated income statement shows a loss before taxes that would have been much larger if not for a fair value adjustment. Looking at a graph of Coors stock price, we can see that price has been on a downward channel for over a year. Recently price broke below the channel and price is currently sitting on a long term trend line at the 2008 lows. So that is Coors third quarter results. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.